following interview was was conducted with Nathan Welsh, President 2009-10 of the Mortar, Mortar Board for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, uh, March the 29th, 2010, in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you very much for this Thank opportunity. Thank you for having me. Um, tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and siblings in early years. Uh, born in Long Beach, California. Came, um, lived in Seal Beach for my entire life. Um, my mother and father both were from the Southern California area. Went to college there. Mom at UCLA and dad at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, they met on ski patrol and we've been a diehard skiing family ever since. So they uh, were actually proposed on the mountain and all that. So uh, I hope the wedding was indoors. No, yeah, it was. Um, but it was fun to get the my grandparents up there apparently they weren't too thrilled about that but um, grandparents came uh, to Southern California by way of Nebraska after uh, my grandfather served in World War II as a B-25 pilot and so we've been uh, rooted in Southern California for quite a while um, they're all business owners and so they're um, pretty well connected and I uh, have a younger brother who's 20 years old and uh, two younger sisters 15 and 12 and um, all going on to do great things uh, so it's we're a very close family very active family um, sports every single day of our lives family trips um, all of us are downhill skiers uh, water skiers scuba divers so we're a very active family Super. tell us a little about high school what clubs and things were you involved in when you were in high school I didn't actually do too much on the club side in high okay. school. Um, I was more involved in sports. I played okay. uh, water polo, rowing, and swimming. So I was, you know, up at 5:30 in the morning in the pool practicing water polo, and then swimming in the afternoon, and then going out to the um, to the water to do some rowing practice. So, how did the, the rowing do? Pretty well. That's yeah. interesting. It's a uh, I, it's a sport that I had never really considered before high school, but had some friends who got involved in it, and it was a nice way to supplement the um, water polo with uh, exercise-wise. Um, I was involved in Boy Scouts outside of high school and got my Eagle Scout there, so um, that was one of the um, bigger service groups that I did. So um, between that, that really kept me pretty busy in high school. Yeah, I would say so. How large was the high school? Um, just over 3,000. Oh. So, yeah. came from a big one. Oh, okay. Now, one of, I, it was actually interesting to hear how many people could count the people in their graduating class on two hands. So, um, <laughs> different background there for a lot of people at Purdue. Right. How did you happen to decide to come to Purdue? Um, I've always been interested in aviation, um, with my grandfather being in, avi in aviation. Um, it's just always something I wanted to do. So when I was looking into colleges, I knew that I wanted to do some type of flight and um, ended up that Purdue was the best fit and I got accepted here and uh, just seemed like the most well-rounded Big Ten college, um, just campus atmosphere that I really wanted to have. Did you come for day on campus too? Um, I actually did not, no. Okay. I toured the campus once on a just a different weekend from everybody else sure. it was 14 degrees and and blowing um, in, the, was, in January February or something it like was that. in February yeah and uh, <laughs> so I still ended up coming here I went home to the 70 degree weather and it didn't deter me from coming here so um, it does happen <laughs> well tell us about your your major and your activities before you move into your current position um, well major is aviation flight technology uh, okay. with a minor in political science um, so I've been uh, basically taking classes in the College of Technology. Um, the clubs have really varied. Um, one door opened and five more would follow. So I started freshman year um, in Purdue Student Government, was elected to Senate, um, representing the College of Technology. Through there, I was involved in several different committees that I was able to take part in. Uh, actually, one of my most proudest um, event or groups was um, a steering committee to rebuild the recreational sports center. So, um, actually, since I was a freshman, we've been gathering information on that um, and basically targeting students what they wanted to see in the new center. We proposed it to the board of trustees. They approved it. The legislator in Indianapolis approved it, and now we're moving towards groundbreaking. So that was one that I really enjoyed. Um, others have included my fraternity, Delta Chi, being vice president in that. 
uh, the Purdue Foundation Student Board, an active member in that, and also my church, uh, Campus House and Campus Crusade here on campus. Sounds good. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about Motor Board. For the researchers, tell a little bit about that, and then talk about some of the challenges and initiatives and programs that, uh, that she took over. Were you, and how did she get elected? Tell us a little about Mortarboard. Well, basically, Mortarboard is a senior honor society. Um, the, our three points are scholarship, leadership, and service. So um, that's what we focus on when we select a class. Um, we actually just recently initiated our newest class of 2011, and so we went through the selection process with that. So we really focus on those three target areas. Um, so every year, about 40 students are inducted the top seniors at purdue are inducted into mortar boards a national organization um, represented on 228 campuses i believe so um, it's fairly large and we really have a hand on a lot of everything um, yeah. we've done events from uh, most recently for a reading is leading project for the local community school children to come on campus and enjoy a fun day of reading activities and encourage that in their lives as well as being able to donate books we've donated uh, well over 400 books to the local community um, so that's something that we've really enjoyed um, other things have included uh, recently in the, well this past fall we do, um, dedicated three portraits to honored deans Beverly Stone, um, Barbara Cook, and Betty Nelson. So that was a proud day, and Betty Nelson was on hand for that. Um, Let me stop you for a minute. Sure. Was that something that had been thought about prior to you taking over, mm -hmm. or has there been some discussion? And, and tell the researchers where they're located now that you have the flag. It had been an ongoing um, okay. event. We, we really stepped it up last year. Um, they were painted over the summer and delivered in the fall. So beginning um, earlier in my term, we were meeting with uh, artists more often and really moving that. Uh, my predecessor had made contact with the artists and had um, finalized the money and the deal. So we were able to take it over with the artwork about to begin and then the dedication. Um, <coughs> and I'm sorry, your other question? Where, where are they located? Oh, they're in the uh, West Faculty Lounge of the Union. Okay. Go ahead, then, some of the other programs you were talking about. Um, so a lot of the other programs really range in the community service aspect. Um, you know, even little things. Now, we've done caroling at um, senior citizens' homes. Um, we've done just basically days of service and hanging out with Purdue alumni around the uh around the community um, and down to service events like serving Thanksgiving dinner to the to the needy and things like that so we we've really every week it's something new um, we're kind of all over the place but we try to do as much good for as many people as possible mortarboard is traditionally a society for women so we also tailor our programs towards women and we every year we honor um, six women of distinguished women of Purdue that have come here to do great things so programs like that that we can still hold true to our Did traditions. Did you have one already for this year? Yes, oh. it took part in, um, in a few months ago. Oh, okay. Also, you should mention about mortar board for the, uh, that you sell, that for the student, everybody buys that, the mortar board. That's right. Uh, the mortar board is our... That's very key. <laughs> if I lose my mortar board, people say, I'm wiped out. That's right. Um, <laughs> that's actually our largest fundraiser. Um, <laughs> this year we sold over 30000 We're expecting about the same for next year. And um, through that, that's how we have our um, dividend every year. And um, actually, over the time at Mortarboard, over their time at Purdue, Mortarboard has been able to donate over nine hundred thousand dollars to student groups, scholarships, and service groups. So, um, <coughs> and that comes primarily from the sale of the calendar. All right. And you've made some changes. At one time, it just used to be the one size, but now you've got a little bit larger. Yeah, we've got the full week at a glance sure. scale um, for people for the more active people that need some more room in there. Um, the cover varies every year. We have an artist competition who um, will they'll design the front cover, and then we'll select that as a class. And so it's a it's a fun process, and thankfully, it's still very successful. That's right. And do you sell? Uh, <coughs> what kind of arrangement do you have with selling it locally? Um, we have uh, contracts with Walmart, Menards, and um, Target, other stores like that, as well as on campus here, University Bookstore, Bookstore and things like that. Right. So 
it's not only available just to students, but to faculty and then community members as well, because with at the local stores, anyone can pick them up. Right, exactly. Okay. And we encourage them to do so. <laughs> That's right. Any new programs, anything new that you uh, recall starting this year that you hadn't been doing? Um, the, two things, the two things we're starting now are, one, a veterans project to honor current serving students or students that are attending Purdue and have already served or are serving now in the armed forces. So um, we're working on how we can do that as an annual event. And we're also, um, for our 85th anniversary, we're going to be honoring Dorothy Stratton, who um, actually just had a ship named after her in the U.S. Navy. So we're talking about getting a model ship to put in the Union as a Remembrance sure. to that, so that will be real. <coughs> so that'll be coming hopefully in the fall of 2012 with our 85th anniversary. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, how about uh, leadership? Your thoughts on a leader's role in academia and the professional world? I'm making note 2012. You got to come back for that. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, leadership, I think, is more of an adaptation to who you are leading. Um, when I was a leader in my fraternity, it called for being the bad guy a lot. You would have to know that these are tech, you know these are your brothers these are the people you live with and sometimes you're going to have to make the unpopular decision that's for the betterment of the house even though it might not be the most popular one so to be able to look beyond temporary popularity and to do the thing that's better for the entire house is a very unique um, style that I felt like I was able to learn through my fraternity um, with my roles in other um, organizations, it's really tailored to who I was leading, but Mortarboard's probably been the most interesting one of all because being that they're 40 of the top students at Purdue, they're all very skilled, um, they're very educated and very um, devoted to whatever they do. And if they are given a task, I know that 99% of the times they're gonna accomplish that. So. I think knowing when to step forward and when to step back is very important. Um, knowing that you know you don't want to step on anyone's toes, but you also want to make sure that things are getting done is a very important thing. So <coughs> I think that's very important about leadership. Yeah, and it, and it carries on in the professional world too. You feel as well. Absolutely. Um, it's it's just a very. It, it's a very touchy thing, honestly, because you don't want to discourage people by micromanaging or things like that. So, um, and you you basically want to be able to to lift everyone's spirits and you know keep them devoted to the task, keep the ball rolling on whatever you might be doing, um, and just keep the momentum going um, and keep everybody upbeat. Keep the challenge going. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, that president's forum I mentioned about Keith Koch talked about the five leadership by <coughs> challenge the process. Uh, inspire a shared vision and enable others to act. Is there any particular one that kind of grabbed you on that? He spoke on those. Right. Um, well, actually, have I've you, heard Keith you, give this you, quite a few times. Oh, yeah, we he knows me. Well, we know each other quite well, and his okay. family are good friends. But, okay. um, you know, he's actually... From, he's from your part of the country. That's yeah. right. Well, a little bit north, but, um, okay. yeah, we've met on a few occasions through different events. But... Um, you know, I, I think that enabling others to act is really important. People might have the passion to do something. That doesn't mean they have the tools to do it. They might not know how to execute a plan. So enabling people to work towards something that they're passionate about is incredibly important because if you have their devotion and their passion already channeled into one area, you know that they're going to do their best work for it. They're going to work harder for it. And you know the end result is going to be the most positive. So if you can give someone the tools, I think that that's when your greatest accomplishment is going to come. Um, something that's not even on here, actually, he always, he always gives three points in his speech, and one is always to jump in water over your head. And with mortarboard, I didn't know what mortarboard was before I got in it. And then three weeks later, I was president of it. So it was truly an experience of jumping in over my head and being able to just see this challenge and challenge myself um, because I knew that I could, I could do the job and I wanted to learn more. So um, I jumped in water over my head, and it's been a very rewarding experience. Super. 
That's very nice. Some of the others, but that's good, that enabling, I think that's nice. And then talk a little bit about the your, the leadership session that Mortar Board uh, sponsors every year, the annual leadership. Actually, uh, Keith Kroc was one of our speakers at that event. Right. Um, it's a yearly. It's an annual event for all students on campus, um, and we basically have six hours of sessions. Um, we have an opening session, two breakouts, a lunch, and a closing. So um, there's different speakers throughout the day that you can pick and choose who you want to go to. So it's truly a wonderful program. This year, I think was uh, obviously I might be a little biased, but it was the best one that I had attended. Um, the quality of our speakers, um, President Cordova gave a great speech in the morning that students were really, you could see that they were engaged. There was a question and answer and just a lot of hands shooting up, a lot of passion for what's going on around campus. So that was exciting to see. Um, and then Keith Kroc talking about his um, experiences and his passion for Purdue and leadership and his unique styles of leadership. I think it's really important because Events like this help people realize what kind of leader they are. If you know, when you see Franz Cordova in the morning and Keith Kroc in the afternoon, you're seeing very two two very different types of people. And throughout the day, when there's different speakers, um, people are seeing very different types of people. So, I think it's good because with such a diverse campus and student body. Um, it's good for people to be able to see different styles that they can identify certain aspects in themselves and see where it has gotten these people and how they can go about doing that themselves. Your point is well taken because di people have different leadership styles. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not all the same. That's right. And by that contrast of yours is a very good point, the morning speaker versus the afternoon speaker. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a lot of planning that goes into planning this. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's several months um, getting the speakers, uh, getting the facilities, um, and little things even down to our giveaways and t-shirts. You know, there's a lot of things that all have to fall into place. We had two very skilled co-chairs that worked on that. Um, another good thing about Mortarboard is our major programming all have chair positions who help run them. So. Um, I'm able to give them the tasks and enable them to ask to act, and I know that you know pretty much everything is run through and gone by incredibly smoothly. So it's been very rewarding to see How that. How many people do you have that, that help you? I mean, is there a board? Is that I mean, you have a board of officers in addition to yourself? Yeah, we have an executive board of six, okay. and uh, then we have a chapter of forty, and that also includes some of the chairs for the different positions as when well. When they're, when they're selected, is it just for one year? They have to be a senior. They do. They okay. have to have completed um, the their fifth semester okay. at okay. the time of nomination. Okay. Now, obviously, some people don't get out of here in four years, so we do allow them to come back and take part if they wish for the uh, remainder of their time. But they have to have completed. Uh, they have to be in their junior year. Okay. Do you ever have any alums? Do they come back at all? Oh yeah. There? Oh yeah, we uh, we have some very active alumni. We actually have a local alumni chapter that we're having a lunch with tomorrow, um, and they come in, back in for, the community. Mm -hmm. or, it's great, and they they come back for a lot of our events. Um, initiations only a few weeks away, so we have a lot come back for that, and it's it's a very special program. When I've heard um, Betty Nelson talk about it, you you really realize how meaningful it is to some people and, and how it's been able to touch a lot of people's lives and the good things that we've been able to do um, over the years have really impacted people in a positive way. So right. it's nice to be able to involve the community in so many right. ways. And it's named Barbara Cook, this yes. year's chapter. Do the other uh, chapters across the country, do they have names as well? Some do. Um, we take pride in knowing that Purdue is a, as a top-ranking school. We're consistently nominated for the Chapter of the Year Award. We've won that twice. Um, and the reason we named it after Barbara Cook, obviously, was um, former dean. She was just incredibly passionate about Mortarboard and took part in so many years, well, served so many years of service yeah, to Mortarboard. Yeah. So it was a very fitting honor that we did that for It's her. a very nice thing that you did. You but did. it's not a very common thing. So, you know, we were we were one of the first to, to honor someone by doing that. Super. How about a Purdue tradition? Do you have a Purdue tradition that you'd like to share with us that comes to mind? Any tradition of Purdue's? 
Um, you know, I think when I when I look back, it's just the overall Big Ten experience. Um, you know, a lot of colleges have their individual things, but I'll just remember most about waking up on Saturdays and being able to walk to a football game <clears throat> um, and being able to take part in that when I was homecoming king. Um, the whole tradition of homecoming was very special, um, obviously, to me as well. Um, but just the overall experience of of having a great university that can excel in academics, um, internationally, in athletics, um, being very proud of that, that's what will stay with me. Tell us about the homecoming. How did they, uh, how did you find out? And what was, how was the feeling down there on, on the field? <laughs> well, actually, you don't find out on the field. You find out no, the I night know, before. I know before, but, <laughs> but, but the field but was you, also right. exciting. Having um, been at all, all the games since I've been here. Yeah, well, we, um, I that's didn't neat. know I was going to win, obviously, but I, I was feeling pretty hopeful about it, so I, my mom and sisters were able to fly out. And so we took part in the, um, all the Friday night activities and the parade and everything like that. Um, and then I found out I won, and so it was cool to have my family there. It was very much more meaningful, I think, um, that they were able to take part in that. And then Saturday was just a whirlwind, you know, making all the stops and, you know, walking around with a crown on. Everybody <laughs> could see you walking by. Um, so that was uh, just a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And then going down on the field and being presented with the ring and um, – you know, I still I still get teased about it, and people want to wear great, my crown. And <laughs> I think it's a great tradition. You it know, is, really, and of course, Rears. Is, it's nice that they have the king and the queen, mm -hmm. and, and they really do a nice job on it. You mm -hmm. know, I think it's 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 really cool. How about an outstanding event? Do you have an outstanding event that comes to mind? Anything special at Purdue? Um, or it could be a not necessarily Purdue anything. Uh, that Purdue yeah. hosts? No, or? an outstanding event that in your life that you have. Oh, okay. Um, well, I think the the biggest for me was being accepted into the Air Force because. Um, well, tell us a little bit about that. How how that came about? Because you you told us your major is in aviation. Right. Too. Okay. Well, I tried to get into the academy when I was in high school, but I had some medical issues that barred me, um, and I thought that the door was closed to that, and when I would take part in all these events on campus, I really. I did them because I enjoyed them, and I, I worked extremely hard, but I didn't really do them for a particular reason. I wasn't having this end game that this is why I was doing all this, to build my resume. I did it because I enjoyed it. But when and I and found out... college life, right? Right, exactly. But when I found out um, in December that I had gotten into flight school with the Air Force, I had been able to overcome my medical issues. Um, it just all kind of came back into perspective for me that everything I had been working on, even back to my Eagle Scout in high school, um, all the hard work that I had put in here, uh, even though I didn't know it at the time, had paid off. And so, just knowing that, it was very, it was a just a truly meaningful part of my of my life that I'll always remember. That you know, you might not always know the the end game, but. Um, building the foundation to get there is what was extremely meaningful to me, and I obviously had a lot of fun doing it. That's great. Where will you be? Uh, do you know where you'll go first, or what? How, how will you be in for a certain period of time? Or? I'll be in for six years as a minimum. Um, I know that I'll be in Maxwell uh, Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama, for 12 weeks. After that, I really after, have no after idea. After graduation, um, I'll go there at the end of July, so I'll be able to go home and and enjoy some time with the family before I leave. That's, so well, then that was my last thing. The next stage is post Purdue <clears throat> is what you're going to be doing. That's what I'll be doing. Um, I'll graduate on May fifteenth, uh, two thousand ten, and then um, head head home for a little while and enjoy some time there, and then go into the full workforce. But you know, with Sounds with good. everything going on today, it's just a blessing to yeah. have a job. So, and I'm really looking forward to the. In next closing, chapter. any comments that you'd like to share? There's something I didn't ask. Anything that comes to mind? Um, I think just looking back, um, Purdue is just has just been an incredible ride for me, as uh, as I can show you by the things I've been able to take part in. It's just really enhanced my experience and my passion for Purdue. Um, 
and I just hope that more students were able to experience what I've been able to experience here. And I just think pro if programs like this are great because, you know, Purdue will always be able to remember its history. And it's, nice, um, right. it's, yeah. it's truly incredible the student life that is experienced at Purdue. I just don't know if I would have been able to do all this somewhere else. So. Let me ask you this. What about athletics? Did you go to the football games too and, and basketball? Uh, hardly missed any of them. <laughs> hardly missed them. So. You know, there's a, it's an interesting thing that uh, with Tiller, you know, when, um, you know, there's that breezeway down there named mm -hmm. Drew Brees, and it was a piece in the paper. They asked Tiller about that, and he said, well, it's just they didn't ask me, but maybe it could be Tiller's way or Tiller's turn. He had kind of an interesting sense of humor, mm -hmm. you know, so. But I, I think that uh, really, anything else that you, you think has been, that I didn't miss, that you're okay? I think you've covered most of it. I want to thank you very, very much. I want to wish you the very best, and I hope we'll keep in touch. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. I got you started.